what if everything was claymation? Ben, I'm going to let you lead us off here. Yeah, so so basically what we were thinking about were those, you know, the good old classic, uh, you know, holiday specials. Rudolph, you know, Ru- Rudolph, Reindeer. Yeah, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. That's the other one I remember. There are a bunch those of them. Like I the found two a that I remember. Them. Yeah. Yeah, the one with having a blue Christmas one. Which one? That one. Uh, a year without a Santa Claus. Yes. Yeah. Do they still play those? I haven't seen those on TV in a while. I think they, they do they on like still play them. Whatever ABC Family used to be uh, Freeform. Is that right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I think they would show them just like on a loop all of like December forward. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to judge too because like they also have the one Christmas channel that's usually on in my house, which is just the Christmas Story for twenty four hours. Ah yes. <laughs> And yes, that is true. There's probably a channel for, like, A Wonderful Life. Probably, yeah. There's probably a channel for, like, every Christmas movie. <laughs> probably. So so a fun thing that I actually learned uh, when we started doing research for this was that most of those those old stop-motion movies are actually not claymation. They're actually – so so most of the famous ones, so really, like, like all the ones that we mentioned there, um, all the stop-motion, stop-motion ones are actually made by the same company. And they actually did not use claymation. They used, like, rubber puppets. So, initially, I had been looking at claymation and what would happen if we were all, like, little claymation figures. Um, which actually wasn't all that interesting. Apparently, that stuff is pretty resilient. <laughs> and, like, it doesn't yeah, get reason, starting... there's a reason they use clay. It's because it's good. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, it doesn't start getting melty until it's, like, 125 degrees, which isn't that common. <laughs> and, like, it starts getting, like harder as it gets colder but doesn't actually hurt it long term it just makes it like stiffer so that'd be kind of annoying but it wasn't actually that, all that exciting the one fun thing i did find with like that version of the question was that uh the the clay they mostly use for claymation plasticine is a like like oil and clay thing um which means that technically if it starts getting hot it actually is flammable so we did oh, have no. A, a possibility of some very exciting spontaneous combustion, but it wasn't, all in all, it wasn't all that fruitful. We wouldn't really be able to cook anything then, right? I no, guess. no, this is true. <laughs> but we'd also think about clays. So I don't know if we have organs. I don't know. I didn't go too far into that. <laughs> so instead, I went into what if we were these, these, these puppets. So like I said, all these, these movies are made by this one company, uh, Rankin Bass Productions. And it was a technology they use called Animagic, which is a great name. And <laughs> thank you so much whoever came up with it. One, so actually, we're all wizards now. Oh yeah, we're wizards. We are all wizards. One sort of like Buck Wild thing I learned. So I always assumed that that these movies were relatively low budget because I feel like stop motion isn't generally that expensive. So the first one they made was Rudolph. And it took them eight, 18 months to make, and it cost $500,000 in 1964, which adjusted for inflation was like $4 million. How long is it? It's only like 20 minutes, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> Each of the puppets cost That's like ridiculous. five grand, which is like $40,000 in today's money. Each one of the puppets. I still don't know how much I always believe those inflation figures where it's like... You know, a loaf of bread cost thirteen dollars back in eighteen forty six, which is like eighteen million dollars in today's money. I'm like, is it though? It's not. It's <laughs> not an exact comparison, but like the important thing is that these were not cheap. <laughs> these were not cheap. It was. It's, this is kind of absurd. Like even even in today's money, each of those puppets being five thousand dollars is kind of insane. Which, which one was the first one they made, and how Rudolph. much was that one? That was that, that was Rudolph. Was the first oh, okay. one. Okay. Exactly. I couldn't find budget for any of the other ones. I didn't know if they had more on those or not. Cause so it the, wasn't like a proven thing. And they're like, this does make money. We're going to make more of them. We're going to pour money into this. Right. Exactly. This was like on a, a, a whim almost. Another fun fact, by the way, that I forgot to mention, uh, Rankin Batch Productions, who did all these, actually also did Frosty, which was a cartoon. They did a few um, uh, they like traditional animation things as well. And one of them was Frosty. So they just did like all beloved Christmas specials. And also some random shit like the Easter Bunny is coming to town, and Nestor, the long-eared Christmas donkey. Um, Christmas donkey. I don't so, know. So they're actually a successful villain that managed to reinvent all our holidays by taking over the media giant. Uh, basically, yeah. And they tried to expand their powers with Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July, but I don't think that one really took off. <laughs> so we got saved from them having just like total calendar domination. But um, <laughs> sorry, I just gotta write down the name of that Christmas donkey movie so I can watch uh, it later. Yes, that is Nestor, the long-eared Christmas donkey. Nestor. Okay, got Nestor. it. Nestor. He sounds like a bad Aquaman villain. <laughs> so you got to figure if we were all these rubber puppets, that's actually got to be like a pretty good thing for like our lifetimes, right? Because rubber is like notoriously 
a thing that doesn't like break down landfills and stuff. Which would probably be right, except for one small detail, which is that before they like put them onto the sets, they spray them down with this non-reflective spray, which was actually acidic. So the puppets would only actually last about 16 months. So that's kind of our upper bound here. <laughs> <laughs> that's our lifespan. So that's why that's why Rudolph was finished in 16 months. Exactly. It was only 20 minutes long. Exactly. <laughs> they it was, were going to make had, a full-length feature. They had another hour planned, but they ran out of puppets. <laughs> And the first ones cost a lot to make, and they couldn't get any more. So that's kind of our, our upper bound here. A couple other things. So size, uh, we would be small. We would have to be small. Uh, these puppets were about eight, eight inches tall. I don't think we necessarily have to be eight inches tall, like, exactly, just because they were. But it's one of those things where, you know, we've always talked about the um, how as things get bigger, their cross-sectional area gets bigger, and they start collapsing in on themselves. And that's going to start happening pretty quickly. So we could, you know, probably figure out a size that would both let us not be absolutely tiny and also make us not break down before we dissolve from the acid. But um, I didn't go through that, but we would smaller. That's the important point. Everything else would be too. This is not a huge deal, but you know, gra- would, would the earth be the same size? Gravity would be, would be the same, right? Oh, I didn't think about it. In fact, actually I didn't, I didn't consider if the, that the earth would also, would the earth be, I guess it would, wouldn't it? Huh? Yeah. I don't, I don't, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Time to cancel this podcast. Go do another week of research and come back. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, guys. Also, one actually, one other thing. They weren't necessarily entirely rubber, actually. Like, for, as an example, Rudolph actually had a wooden head, torso, and hooves, which I was kind of we- weird out by that one because that implies that, like, only his legs were made of rubber. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> and I guess his neck, since they specified head and torso. I don't know. <laughs> So, technically, I guess parts of us would last longer, which is kind of weird as well. But speaking of parts of us, uh, the one other really fun thing about all of this is that um, moving around gets kind of complicated because there were two ways the puppets moved, really depending on how important the character was. Um, So the the cheaper puppets basically would be like rubber models that had copper wire running through them that were like slightly flexible and you could sort of like move, just, you know, bend like the, the, the pieces on them. Uh, the thing is, that was much more fragile, and after, like, being repositioned a few times, they would break. So I figure we don't want people to be like that. <laughs> it's probably bad. <laughs> you only got 16 months, no need to cut that shorter. E- exactly, yeah. Or just, like, live half of that without, like, you know, arms. So the more expensive ones basically had joints built into them. Um, so they could bend, you know, more freely in certain directions. But then they would have multiple, like, arms for them, depending on how the arm had to move, and they would swap those out. So I think that people can do that, depending on how they need to be able to move their limbs at the time. (laughs) (laughs) That's convenient. Right. Well, and that's, so I was trying to figure out after that was, you know, I'm sure at some point the arms will break and stuff, but at this point, arms are kind of replaceable. So I was figuring out, do you just carry around a bunch of arms with you? I decided, no, that's not going to work, because, like, one, it's going to put more stress on your legs. It's to carry more legs, and it's just a vicious cycle. We're not Mr. Potato Head. Right, exactly. So so what I realized is that at this point, arms and legs are just interchangeable between all people, basically. So there's just, like, like <laughs> stores that just have, like, rows of arms, and, like, there's, like, a given arm, take an arm bucket, like, cash register shirts and stuff. You know, so just, like, when you need an arm, you can find the one you need, like, you know, nearby. Because everyone, everyone has this problem. Yeah, like, like the grocery store checker will have, like, the 90-degree bend arm so you can carry your bag to the car. Exactly. Exactly. Which is good because that already gets you halfway to bending the other arm, which will be your driving arm. And then you'll have two arms that you can dri- – two bent arms that you can drive with. Yeah, 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 the one that has, like, the joint in the shoulder so you can move the wheel. And then the one that, like, has it in the elbow so you can, like, you know, work your, your, your gears. Doesn't a uh, facial – expressions work the same way so it actually depends so so that one yes they frequently would have would have multiple heads that they would swap out for different expressions <laughs> that's not really gonna work for us i don't think because those are much more individual <laughs> than arms so the other thing and this leads in very well to my last point which is the other thing that changes majorly is um the way that your mouth works which is that it doesn't because they don't have like mouth joints that's not going to work so the mouth is made out of like a little piece of paper and they would swap it really quickly between different ones to make it look like the mouth was moving so that's what we would so do. that's what we'd be doing <laughs> <laughs> we can make a flip book for our mouth basically and i i think what you kind of have to do 
I think I think what it comes down to is that you no longer like we just because of our our issues with our limbs we can't actually like flip them out quickly to make it look like we're, we're actually talking. People will figure it out. But what I think you do is you have a little bag on you that has like a few different mouths for different like like expressions. So like you have your smiley mouth and like your stern mouth. Yeah, the, the basics. Exactly, you know, just sort of give people an idea of your your mood and everything. You know, I'm angry. Exactly, <laughs> you know, maybe you have like little like little paper like like slanted down eyebrows too. You know, you put up <laughs> there when you're real angry. And the other funny th- thing with this that I thought about was that because they're paper, I feel like you're gonna have to take them off if it starts like raining. So when it's raining, everyone's going to like just pull like all their expression off and just like walking around entirely stone faced, which will be exciting. That's like a whole different like claymation special right there. Oh, yeah. That one is that one is <laughs> actually like a, a pretty, horror movie. pretty terrifying, uh, pretty terrifying mental image.